And good evening, everyone. Welcome to another exciting edition of the Saturday Night Wine Stream and another exciting episode of Drink with Rick. I'm Rick, and tonight we are going to open a 2018 Malbec. And this is from, uh, of all places, uh, Costco. Now, I wouldn't have expected to uh, try out a Costco wine here, but it was given to me as a gift, and it was highly recommended. So we're going to try it. I'm going to try it for the first time, and uh, we'll see how it, uh, how it tastes and how it pairs with food. We're also going to finish off our giveaways from the last episode. And, uh, and we didn't get to give everything away in the last episode. I, you know... I want to give all this stuff away because I have a lot still to give out. So join me in the chat, participate, um, tell me how you're doing, tell me what you're drinking or what you like to be drinking or what you like to see me drinking. Uh, let's just talk and have a good time. This is the last episode of Drink with Rick for 2019. And uh, I want to make this the best one of the whole year. So, um, and I think with your help, we can all do that together. Uh, of course, if you're just joining me, you can watch right here on Facebook if, if we're already friends on Facebook. And even if we're not, you can go to the Facebook page at Drink With Rick, uh, our Facebook page, Drink With Rick. You can also catch it on YouTube, and you can join the chat on YouTube at Drink With Rick on YouTube. We are also on Twitch, so you go to twitch.tv. Now, we're on there as Savoia Media there, but you can... Uh, join in the chat as well. I'm going to be watching all these. And we're on Periscope. And you can also uh, join in on Twitter. Catch, uh, catch Twitter. Uh, you can join in at Twitter at Drink with Rick. And I'll check in on there as well. Uh, I'm looking forward to having an exciting time with, with all of you. And I'm glad to see you here. Let's see, first of all, who's joined us in the chat here? Matt's in the chat with us. Uh, I think someone else joined us in the chat up above. And I, I it scrolled off and I couldn't really see it. But Phil's here. And Phil, I'm, I'm really happy to see you. I hope your holiday season has been really good. And I hope you have a great new year also. Lon's joined us in the chat. And I, I'm happy to see you too, Lon. Uh, thanks, Lon. Lon for, for joining us, and Courtney's in the chat, and Jonathan as well. Lon says, uh, what's up, Rick? Well, we're about to drink some wine, give away some stuff, talk, and uh, and just have a great time in general. Of course, now, uh, you can also, uh, you know, watch the show live at drinkwithrick.com. It's streaming live there. The, the chat isn't there, but you can leave comments in the, uh, below in the uh, video posted below the, the video. And of course, you can always contact me at rick at savoyamedia.com. Don't be afraid to subscribe to me on YouTube. You can also subscribe to the podcast later on. If you missed anything, you can listen to the podcast later. We post the podcast on Monday nights at 10 p.m. And uh, you can subscribe to that on, uh, you know, Spotify and uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, uh, Whereas iHeartRadio, Stitcher Radio, we're all over the place. So, uh, so you can hear me anytime, anywhere, at your leisure. Uh, let's go ahead and introduce the wine in just a moment. And before we do that, let me check YouTube, see who's in YouTube. We don't have anyone in YouTube or Twitch at the moment, but we will check in on them. But we have a lot of people in the chat uh, on Facebook, and I'm glad you're here joining me. We have some food to pair this with as well. My, my lovely wife, Chi, has prepared some food to pair with this. So we're going to see how this goes with the food. Um, before we get uh, too far into the weeds here on the wine, let me let me go ahead and introduce it and tell you what this wine is. And we'll, um, we'll talk about it a little bit and uh, tell you how I came um, to, to try this out. This is uh, let me go to the wines here. Whoops, that's last week's wine. All right. <laughs> I forgot to change the photo, folks. Well, that's uh, that's the first one. Uh, let's try this. There is this week's wine. Now, by the way, last week's wine was the Escorlata, and it was very, very good. I, I rather enjoyed it. Uh, thanks, Matt, and the folks at Wine Store. Uh, enjoy that wine. I look forward to, to picking up some more. It turned out to be a hit also at the Christmas party I went to, uh, and, and the folks there. And uh, my friends, uh, Michael and Trudy, uh, who hosted the uh, Christmas party a couple of weeks ago, I brought them a bottle as a gift. And apparently they, uh, they tried it and had some of their guests try it, and they really, really enjoyed it. So, um, I, uh, and they, uh, someone asked me where, where I got it from, and I told them it was a wine store in Blakeney. 
Uh, and uh, they said, well, we'll have to go there and check that out. So, uh, man, I think we'll, you'll have a few new customers on the way there. Uh, now, uh, back to the wine here. Tonight we're doing a Malbec. This is a Kirkland 2018 Malbec. And this is actually, I believe this is a house brand. Kirkland is a house brand for Costco. And I'm going to read up a little bit on this, this wine. Um, apparently it's highly rated. A lot of people like this wine. And it's, um, it's a Kirkland Signature Mendoza Malbec 2018 from Mendoza, Argentina. I'm going to read a little bit from the back side of this, of this wine. And let's uh, pull that up. I'm going to read the back end of it. And this is... Kirkland Signature Malbec, Mendoza, Argentina. Argentina's most acclaimed wine region for Malbec, Mendoza province, is in the foothills of the Andes Mountains. The grapes for this Kirkland Signature Malbec are grown between 2,800 and 3,300 feet above sea level. This deep purple Malbec has intense fruit notes of plum and cherries and a long rounded finish. It displays a perfect balance of ripe fruit coupled with oak spice from 12 months of careful aging in French oak barrels. Uh, and this is crafted at the uh, Brokel, Brokel Winery in Mendoza. This Malbec was produced especially for Kirkland Signature, uh, Sergio Case winemaker. This uh, wine has 13.5% uh, alcohol by volume and a 750 milliliter bottle. So um, we, will, uh, we will look forward to opening up and trying this out in just a few moments. Now, I'll tell you, I, I received this as a gift. As, as I was saying before, I went to a party. Uh, um, my friends Michael and Trudy uh, threw a part of their annual Christmas party that we go to every year. We're sort of the honorary um, uh, neighbors in their neighborhood. <laughs> and there's a story behind that, but, uh, but we're longtime friends and neighbors. And... Uh, Friends and honorary neighbors, I guess I should say. And um, last year, he picked up, in the last couple of years, I think he, he's been buying this Malbec from Costco. And um, this year, uh, I brought them the Escorlata, and uh, they learned about the wine stream. Of course, it's our first year doing the wine stream, so they, they heard all about it, and they were watching the stream later on. But um, the Malbec, he, it, when we were leaving... He handed me a bottle of this Malbec, and he said, why don't you try uh, reviewing this on, on the stream and see what you think? And I said, you know what? I'm going to do that. Uh, I really appreciate it, by the way, Michael, if you're, if you're watching. Um, this is something that he really, really enjoys. He really likes this Malbec, and I think he buys it by the case over there from, from, uh, from Costco. And I was thinking, well, you know, he really talked up. He really talked about how great this wine was. It was his favorite and Trudy's favorite wine. And, I, you know, I checked around a little bit online, and I said, well, there must be something to that. And believe it or not, this comes highly rated. A lot of people like this Malbec. It seems to be very, very popular. So uh, we'll, we'll try it. We're going to try it uh, right now. Now, he was telling me how much he paid for the wine. I was looking around, and uh, I think the vino... They don't carry it, but they were, I think, well, let's see, you know, well, Seller Tracker was, uh, had it listed for $9.10 on average. Um, uh, Wine.com, well, they don't, uh, they, they gave it an estimated $8.99, although they don't really carry it. And uh, Wine Searcher was, was giving an average of about $8.99 uh, for a bottle. Uh, and I think going up here, it's, uh, yeah, the, the Vino doesn't sell it. And they didn't really have a price for it, but they gave it uh, some high ratings. Uh, but from what I understand, from what Michael was telling me, it uh, I think he was paying $6.99 a bottle. And from what I've seen online from other people, other commenters and reviewers of this wine, uh, that seems to be about the going rate for this bottle, $6.99 to $7.99. And uh, apparently, from what they say, it sounds like a good deal. So we're going to try it out right now. We're going to open it up. And uh, we're going to try it before we do that. Let me see anyone else in the chat going through here. And let's see, anyone else joining us in the chat? Uh, stick around. We're going to try this wine right now. Now, to, to open it up tonight, I have, of course, ouch, just stab myself with it. Uh, I have my trusty 
wine, uh, decorker, my wine corker. Let me open, go ahead and open this up first with the, let me get the uh, foil cutter and open that up with that first. And, and this is all from the Veneto wine lover set, the corker is, that is, uh, from the Veneto wine lover set that I talk about uh, each week. And uh, this isn't, this is, this, this uh, corkscrew is from, from Aldi in the UK apparently. But uh, it, I, I like this nice little contraption. It's fun to, it's fun to play with and it's fun to, fun to watch. And this is kind of an awkward position to open it with, but we'll get it open. And I'll remove the cork from it later. So as I said before, I've learned the hard way to do that. Let me put that away. So I have my, <laughs> my wife was saying, you sure you have the wine glass? Yeah, I do. I have my trusty Cooper's Hawk Genuine Crystal Wine Glass from the Cooper's Hawk Winery and Restaurant in Orlando, Florida. And of course, I have my Veneto um, Aerator from the Veneto Wine Lover Set, which, by the way, we're giving away one of these tonight. As a matter of fact, uh, last week, and of course, if you tuned in last week, uh, we gave away a few prizes, and Courtney and I believe Jonathan won. I think Jonathan won one of these too. So, uh, and uh, who else was uh, Chris? Was uh, won something, and we're gonna give away some more stuff. So stick around, and let's see. Let's go ahead and pour it. A little pour. Just pour a little bit for starters. It's a very, very um, dark complexion. This is a full-bodied, this does seem to have a pretty full body. Um, and it, some people said it was medium body, but it looks pretty full to me. And in these lights, it, it definitely looks full-bodied. And we'll, we'll, uh, let it, we'll let it breathe a little bit, just for, for a minute or two. And let's see if anyone else has joined us in the chat. Uh, once again, don't be shy. Um, Talk to me in the chat, and uh, of course, the more you participate, the more chances you have to win something. Let's see, uh, anything going on? Okay, I guess we're, I guess we're all right. Everybody's just watching and waiting, or either that, or they've fallen asleep already. <laughs> Hope not. Oh, and of course, to to uh, try the wine out tonight, I have to pair it with. I have some burgers, a little bit of burger, and some barbecue. And I have, uh, I, well, we've got these olives, but I don't think they're going to fit with this wine here. And I have several cheeses. Got some crackers, of course. Several cheeses. I have the, the Gouda um, uh, lawn. And, and, and Jonathan, uh, uh, Courtney, we have the Gouda tonight, the creamy Gouda for, from Trader Joe's. I have some uh, cheddar cheese, and I also have some soft uh, cheddar cheese here, the soft mozzarella, very soft mozzarella cheese. The thing about Mal Malbecs is that they will go really good with, um, they're supposed to go pretty good with um, some grilled meats and some barbecue, things like that. So that's why I have some barbecue here. We're going to try it with the grilled meats, steaks, lamb, chicken, uh, some grilled chicken, that is, uh, and pork. I don't eat pork myself, but I understand it will go good with some of those things. And it goes good with soft cheeses. So I have some softer cheeses here to try it with. I really don't recommend uh, pairing this with uh, really uh, foods that are uh, uh, like pastas and, and things like that uh, too much. But uh, with some of the softer uh, cheeses and, and uh, barbecued meats and things like that, should should go fine. We're going to try it out in just a moment. Uh, and let's see if we have any comments in the chat. I think everyone's waiting. To see what I'm going to do next. Well, this is what I'm going to do next. I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, try this wine and see if it's everything that uh, everyone says it is. Mm. Okay, it smells like a Malbec. Dark fruit, right off the bat. Dark fruit, um, a little spicy. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Smells, uh, let's give it a taste.
tastes spicy, just like it smells. It tastes, it tastes spicy. And this fruit, uh, I'd say, you got the berries in there. It's, um, yeah, I'd say some blackberry, uh, most of blackberry, black fruits, uh, maybe a little bit of dark cherry. It's, uh, maybe a hint of, um, a little bit of hint of coffee in there. I think I need a little more of this. Kind of hard to tell. That was really coffee I was tasting in there. Of course, I've had a lot of coffee today, so I might just still be. Uh, I can I can taste I can taste some alcohol <laughs> definitely. So it might be a little higher than thirteen point five percent. So I better take it easy, go easy on this. Um, it's it's really smooth, not tannic. It's not tannic. It's rather smooth. Um, not much of a finish to it, I have to say. It's it's not. Um, it's a very very easy te uh, to finish, and I can see why a lot of people might like it. For because for some people that don't like uh, a very lingering finish, uh, you know, if you're just drinking it socially with other people and you don't want anything that's just going to hang around, uh, some people don't like that. I can see why why it might be might be popular with some of those. Personally, I like to have a, a nice strong finish to it, and it, it doesn't really seem to have that finish, but this is a wine you could probably, it would probably be easy to drink. I mean, you know, you could drink it and drink it and not really realize how much of it you're drinking until you've had quite a bit of it. But uh, it's, you know, a little bit, a little spicy at the very beginning on the nose, but uh, it doesn't last it, it goes down. It's very. It, it is smooth. It is smooth going down, but um, there's the finish is very very light. Yeah. So let's uh, go back to the chat here and uh, <clears throat> and then let's try it. I'm going to try it with the with the uh, burger. So we have the burger here. Try it with the burger and without the barbecue sauce. <clears throat> Excuse me. Not the barbecue sauce. Let's try it. Because that's what it's supposed to pair with. Mm. We'll see. <clears throat> mm. Burger's good, by the way. And I'm, I think I'm missing some of the comments down here. Whoa, a lot of people comment. I missed the comments down here. It's good with the burger. Uh, let's see. Courtney says, uh, Rick must not be seeing any of our comments. You know what, Courtney? I was right. For some reason, it was just hanging up. And I apologize for that, folks. Uh, for some reason, it was just the, the comments were hanging up. Facebook, what can I say? It's been an interesting year streaming on Facebook. <laughs> but... Um, I had an issue a couple of, uh, a couple of weeks ago with Facebook um, <clears throat> streaming there, and, and I'm trying to work out the kinks. I apologize for that, folks. Uh, but yeah, Courtney, uh, it, I, I was missing the comments, but you're back up. Courtney uh, says, um, <laughs> uh, Rick, or, uh, Jonathan says, Rick, are you there? Yes, I am here. I am here, Rick. Uh, and Jonathan says, we got a watch party going. Oh, Jonathan, great. Hey, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope you're not... I hope you're watching and, and drinking and and uh, not laughing too much. Well, you know, you can laugh. Enjoy it. It's okay. Laugh at me. Laugh with me. Just laugh. Enjoy it. Have a good time. Chi says, should I knock on the door? <laughs> and Matt says, yes. And I actually think I did hear a knock on the door a while ago, and I missed that. I apologize for that once again, folks. I don't know what happened with the chat there. It was just not moving for some reason. So, uh <laughs> Should I read all these comments? Uh, Courtney says, yes, sneak down and give him a kiss on the cheek. And uh, and she starts laughing. LOL. Uh, <laughs> well, that's that's embarrassing. <laughs> all right, let's try, let's try this again. Because um, I think I like this. 
Well, thank you, Facebook. I don't know what happened to the guy. Yeah, that's what's happening is that I see new comments, but they're not flowing for some reason. Mm. Yeah, I'd say it goes pretty nice with a burger. Not bad. Not a bad pairing with the burger. Courtney says, we're laughing with you, Rick. Thank you, Courtney. I appreciate that. I'm laughing, too. Um, look, if you can't laugh with, if you can't laugh at yourself, you know, uh, then it's just, you, you just, you, you, you have no, no sense of humor at all, right? So, um, why don't you go to try this with a little barbecue sauce? Because I've, I've wanted to try this with barbecue sauce. I say it goes with barbecue and some barbecue sauce, I guess. Hmm. Mmm. Sticky fingers barbecue sauce. Mm. Not bad. I think this would go okay with barbecue. Yeah, I kind of, kind of, I, I, I wouldn't have with too much sauce. I put a lot of, I drenched it in sauce, so it's a little overpowering, but no, it's not too bad with barbecue. Mm, not too bad. Let's try it with a little bit of the cheese. Now, of course, let's try it with a little bit of the, the Gouda. My favorite smooth, uh, the uh, creamy Gouda from Trader Joe's. And um, I need a little more wine for this, don't I? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You know, I haven't tried a wine on the stream yet that doesn't go good with this creamy Gouda. It, it really, honestly, I've got to do that again just because it's so good. Mm. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely a winner. I don't know if I recommend mixing cheese with the barbecue, but I should have. Should have uh, had a cracker first. But i tell you what, let's go ahead and try it with the soft mozzarella because this is supposed to go good with soft cheeses like a mozzarella. This is a good, good mozzarella. Once again, it works. I like it with the mozzarella. I'm not sure I'm ready to try it with the white cheddar yet. It's a little bit of a harder cheese. But um, we'll try that. Maybe we'll try that a little bit later. I also have a cookie. My son Tommy and his friend Nick, um, they like to bake as well. So they came and they and they made uh, they made some cookies here. And I have one of their peanut butter cookies. I'm going to try that with the with uh, this wine. See, because sometimes cookies go pretty well with wine, just because it's all sugar, right? <laughs> Jonathan says, mm "Mmm, yeah." So. Uh, we're going to have some more of the wine. I think that's a good idea. And we'll try it with a cookie a little bit later. I like that. Uh, homemade cookies. And, of course, my son Tommy and his friend Nick, they do their uh, Cube Command podcast. And they, they were doing an episode earlier today, uh, recording one of those. And then after they did that, they went downstairs and did some baking. Sometimes they do some baking um, and make some videos on YouTube uh, about their adventures and baking in the kitchen and uh they're they're always fun to watch and um their cube command podcast is about pop it's it's about gaming and pop culture and movies and things like that and they, they talk about all that stuff but he's been doing that for a couple of years <clears throat> she says uh he looks hungry isn't he poor rick starving <laughs> i'm eating in front of everybody okay well look if you guys are at the watch party don't let me stop you from eating. <laughs> um, go ahead and enjoy me eating and drinking. Tell me what you're eating. I'd like to know what you're eating. And Bill has joined us in the chat. Bill, it's great to see you. I want to say um, Happy New Year to you, Bill, my old friend Bill Horton. And he's been, um, he and I have uh, been friends for many, many years. We go way, way back to, to WOFL. He's another one of our WOFL alumni. And... Uh, and as well as Phil, Phil is uh, Phil and Bill, 
Phil and Bill are both uh, friends of mine from from Channel Thirty Five way back in the day, and uh, uh, good good friends and and uh, uh, just 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 all around great people. And here's to both of you. And that's a good segue to get into the birthdays because I have a couple birthdays that I want to want to celebrate. And before we do that, of course, I have to refill this glass. Let's do the birthdays now because I think that's. Uh, First of all, I want to say happy birthday to my friend Sharon, Sharon Catron Harold. Uh, her birthday was was the 27th. That was Friday. That was yesterday, and uh, we go way way back. Uh, and um, and my, uh, my my good friend Perry Harold uh, from from way way back uh, from my days when as a kid. I know him way since I was a kid uh, going to church there. And here's to Sharon. Happy birthday. Happy happy birthday to you. And um, I have one more birthday I want to toast. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of birthdays this week, but uh, I have one more birthday I want to toast. It's a very, very special one for a very, very for a person who's very, very special to me. And this is for my niece, Elisa, Elisa Jane. Elisa, happy birthday to you! I want to say happy, happy birthday, my niece, Elisa. I've known her ever since she was just a little baby, and uh, her sister. Um, Angela, um, I, I've known her ever since she was born. Very, very close to me. They've always been very, very close to me. And uh, we we spent, uh, especially when they were younger, we uh, spent quite a bit of time together. Uh, Lisa, someone who's very, very dear to my heart. Um, and I want to say uh, I love you, Lisa. And happy birthday to you. Her birthday is tomorrow, as a matter of fact. You thought I'd forget your birthday if you're watching later. She's not there in the chat now, but if she's watching later, uh, you know you know I wouldn't forget your birthday. Not ever. Happy birthday, Elisa. And I, am hope, I hope you do, you're doing very, very well. And Christina has joined us in the chat. Christina, it's great to see you. Christina uh, is a wife of my good friend Jim. Um, Jim and I go way, way, way back um, to, to when we were kids. We pretty much grew up together, you know, for the most part. And um, and I told you about Jim last week. And you know, and he's also very, very talented. He's a real Jim's a great guy. He's also very, very talented uh, with music. And if in, if you go, uh, if you remember, for those of you who may have uh, remember uh, who may remember me from the Force Field podcast way back. In the day, uh, Jim was uh, the one who um, created the music, the original music for the Force Field podcast, and uh, a lot of our original music for for our films. And uh, and Christina, I hope you and Jim are doing well as as well as the kids. And uh, and here's to you all as well. And my niece Elisa has joined us in the chat. Elisa. <laughs> She says, thanks, Uncle Rick. Love you so much. I love you right back, Elisa, very, very much. And um, I think about you a lot. And you got to come up and visit us. You, you and Angela both need to come up and visit us sometime soon. Don't be uh, – now, we're, we're probably going to come down uh, – hopefully you'll be down there when we come down there in Orlando. We're going to be down in Orlando um, in uh, March, March uh, 2020. For Podfest, we'll be down there for Podfest 2020. Anyone, any of my podcaster uh, friends uh, who are down there are also going along. I'll be seeing you down there as well. well Tommy and I will both be down at Podfest uh, 2020. We got our tickets. We bought our tickets just the other day, so we will be down there. That's uh, March 7th through the 9th, so or 6th through the 9th, uh, 8th. It's around there somewhere. It's <laughs> 6th to the 8th, and. Uh, we uh, they did sit through ninth last year, sixth through the eighth, and in, uh, in March. And so we're looking forward uh, to seeing all of our podcaster friends again there. And um, once again, Elisa, here is to you. Happy birthday! And don't forget, party responsibly. <laughs> I know you will. I know you will. And Bill is saying making notes. Well, Bill, um, what, what kind of notes are you making? 
<laughs> notes about the wine or notes about yeah um you know bill and and i once again we go way way back to uh, wfl and um we had some great times back then we really did we had a lot of fun and uh we had also had a lot of fun with uh yeah, every once in a while we we uh, we prank a couple of people there <laughs> But um, we, we, had, we had some great times, really did. And uh, I miss those days. And, uh, Bill, I, I don't know if I'm going to get a chance to see you guys down there in Orlando when I come down there in March, but um, maybe, maybe we can make uh, some time to, to go out and see all you guys. It would be nice. Bill Horton says, Podfest, yes. Um, Bill, if you, if you are interested in podcasting, definitely show up. Come, come down to see, uh, see some Podfest. It's going to be at the... Uh, I believe it's a world. Uh, it's the uh, Orlando World Marriott Resort. I think is where it is. And um, Penny says hi. And my my wonderful sister Penny is here in the chat. Penny, hi right back at you. It's great to see you. I want to I want to toast Penny as well. Penny and and uh, there we go. Penny and Tom and Ben. All three. Of, I just want to make sure I didn't knock anything over there. <laughs> I want to say here's to you. And I hope you're having happy holidays. And Bill says, uh, no. Um, well, Bill, if we get a chance, we I, I'd love to come down there and see all you guys. Really would. Uh, I don't know if we're going to have a chance to, to do it because it, it's pretty packed that, that weekend. But uh, if, if we get a chance, it would be great to, to be able to get in touch with all of you down there and, and maybe, maybe meet up with you at some point. Uh, at least for lunch or something, I, it would be great to see you guys again. You know, I haven't really had a chance to to get together with um, any of my uh, WFL friends since uh, it was uh, I don't know about five six years ago. And I think uh, my I think Chris Wolf and uh, and uh, let's see uh, who else he was up here at the time. He was working in Charlotte at the time, and he and our good friend. Um. Uh, oh, this wine's getting to me. <laughs> he and my good friend um, Bill Casto and I got together and had lunch one day. Let me uh, let me put set this wine down for just a minute. You know what? I think there's a little bit more alcohol than thirteen point five percent. I think I better uh, back off on the wine just a little bit because I want to pace myself and. <laughs> Penny says, "Oh, I love the bottle test you have. Oh, love the bottle fest you have behind you. Yeah, um, you know what, Penny? This is all of the uh, bottles that I've had on this wine stream since we started this. And I, I want to say that um, before we go to, the, to toasting the national days, because I got to take a break from this wine for a minute. Maybe have a little water. <laughs> mm. And Penny, also, Penny, thank you very, very much for the wonderful gifts that you guys sent us. Uh, they, they were really, really great gifts. I really appreciate it. Uh, we all really appreciate it. Um, where was I? Remember, folks, this is a stream of consciousness show. My stream of consciousness goes off sometimes when I have quite a bit of this wine. Um, the bottles back there. These bottles, of course, uh, this has been our first year of the uh, Saturday Night Wine Stream of Drink with Rick. And uh, we have progressed from just a little test kind of stream at the very beginning of the year. Uh, I think it was uh, February, the end of February that we first started it. And uh, now to the end of the year, this is the last... Um, wine stream for 2019 and i'm going to get back to that uh, towards the end of the show um i have a couple of things i wanted to to, to uh, mention about that but um of course through the course of the year i have gone through all these bottles each one of these bottles is a bottle of wine that i have opened uh and tasted and reviewed uh on the wine stream throughout the year we've done this is our 42nd episode for the year so, uh, yes, I have had 42 bottles of wine on the wine stream. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> I've tasted every single one of them. Anyway, so uh, get back to the National Days for just a minute, because I, I do, there are a couple of National Days I do want to cover, a couple of important ones that I think we should all toast together. Uh, December 28th, today is December 28th, what's left of it. Uh, 
Today is National Short Film Day. And um, <clears throat> Christina, you're still there. Uh, and if Jim's watching, uh, I know he would appreciate this. Today is National Short Film Day. Uh, my friend Jim, my, my, uh, you know, who's, who's really more like a brother to me, and uh, my other friends, uh, Pete Gibbser, uh, Doug Torta, uh, and Doug, I've mentioned on the wine stream before, he, he passed away um, a little uh, earlier this year. And, <clears throat> and um, Eric Solomon and I, we, uh, we got together and we started a film club in high school. And we, after high school, we continued to make our short films on Super 8 and 16 millimeter, mostly Super 8. And uh, we had a lot of time, a lot of fun doing that. We learned a lot of things about film, filmmaking. It was, you know, we just had a good time. And um, basically, that's that's uh, we did a lot of different things. I mean, that wasn't the only thing we did, but we we did a lot of uh, short films, and uh, we went to a lot of film festivals. We were part of the, uh, what at the time was the, uh, it started off as the Orlando Film, uh, the um, Cinematography Club of Orlando, and then went on to become the Cinematography, the uh, Orlando, what was it? The Association of Orlando, uh, what was it? <laughs> there was the Association of Cinematic and Video Arts. This is so long ago. And uh, then it later became the Association of Cinematic Arts. And... Um, we did a lot of short films. That was our thing. So National Short Film Day, December 28th, is... Um, and actually, that's not too far from when uh, Jim and I released our, our last uh, film uh, in Super 8. Uh, and that was back in 2003. You know, it was just the year before I met my wife, Chi. Oh, no, excuse me. I just met my wife, Chi. Um, it was pretty close to that time that we released that. And we showed it for the first time. And uh, so we, we have a great appreciation for short films and uh, low-budget films and independent films and that sort of thing. Here's the National Short Film Day. And uh, National Chocolate Candy Day. Today was National Chocolate Candy Day. I've got to toast that. But I tell you what, um, I've had a little bit too much chocolate this year and I'm gonna uh, that's one of my New Year's resolutions I'm cutting back on the chocolate I'm cutting back on all that stuff um, I've already cut back on the wine somewhat uh, I'm cutting back on, on, on a lot of different things to, to kind of get myself back because I see myself gaining a little more weight and I don't want to, to do that but um, it's hard to pass up uh, chocolate candy isn't it um, I have a couple of chocolate candies downstairs that I'm saving. They happen to be actually Necco candies, the chocolate uh, Necco candies. And I loved Necco candies. And when uh, I was one of those people that when they, when the Necco candy company went out of business, I was one of those who, who looked around and, and looked to buy up what was left of the Necco candies down there because it was my, one of my favorite candies. The Necco was one of those things, you know, the little hard wafer candies, and they'd been around for uh, since like World War I. And it was one of those, it's one of those things that you either love them or you hate them. Um, and I just happen to be one of those things, one of those people that, that love Neckos. Now, uh, the Necco Candy Company, when they went out of business last year, they were purchased, they were, they were bought out by the Spangler Candy Company. And Spangler promised that they would, well, not really not promised, they said that they were going to reintroduce Necco candies and the Sweetheart, little Sweetheart candies with these little sanglings on them, um, back into the... Uh, back uh, in, into the market, uh, I think earlier, it was back in November, December. They said in November, you know, November, I think is what they said. And uh, I haven't seen them. And then I went to talk to my local candy vendor over here. <laughs> yeah, I got a candy vendor. Uh, the guy at the candy store in the mall, and, and I've been showing up every week. He's get kind of tired of seeing me show up every week, asking him when the Necco candies are coming out. And every time I walk in the door, he goes, no, 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 they're not here yet. Uh, so, yeah, I've got my own candy supplier. <laughs> uh, yeah, I need to, uh, to ease up on that. But uh, he said that they were, they were not going to show up until sometime in the middle of next year. So I don't have my Necco candies for, 
for another six months at least. I love Neckos. Anyway, what was going with that? National Chocolate Candy Day. Here's to that. I'm just having a sip. National Card Playing Day. National Card Playing Day is um, is today. So if you like to play cards, uh, poker, go fish, uh, you know, solitaire, whatever it is, it's National Card Playing Day. So play play a card game, and uh, and celebrate it. Yeah, National Card Playing Day. Oh, and it's National Pledge of Allegiance Day. Now, um, Pledge of Allegiance, and uh, I think we were all taught the Pledge of Allegiance. We were in school, and um, I, uh, being patriotic, I want to toast National Pledge of Allegiance Day. We're going to toast that as well. December 29th, which is tomorrow, is National, Prep, National Pepper Pot Day. And National TikTok Day. Now, what National TikTok Day is, and I had to do a little bit of uh, searching around for this. National TikTok Day is when you're the day that you set aside to try to to uh, wrap up everything that you hadn't done or hadn't finished for the year. Like if you had some unfinished business, you have a bucket list of stuff that you wanted to get done for 2019. Um, National TikTok Day is the day that you're supposed to try to get them all done, or make a list, or get as many done as you can. Um, if if you're so inclined, but here's the National TikTok Day, and yes, um, I do have a lot of things left undone on my list. I have some things on this list on my show notes that I haven't done yet, but we're getting there. We're getting there. I want to try to keep this show down. Um, and December thirtieth, December thirtieth is National Bicarbonate of Soda Day. National Falling Needles Family Fest Day. I, I didn't do any research on that. I have no idea what that is. But here's one that I think everyone knows and can get behind. It's National Bacon Day. Tomorrow is Bacon Day. Um, you know what? Um, and I, I don't do pork bacon. I do beef bacon. I love beef bacon. It's, it's very, very rich. But I, I do turkey bacon a lot. And I love, I love bacon. Uh, and so does our dog. <laughs> I think that's one of the second words he learned besides his name. Uh, first name, Cosmo. That's, that's, that's the first thing he learned was his name. And then the second, I think the second word he ever learned was bacon. And because he loves bacon. So here's in Bacon Day. And, um, and you know what? Um, of course, you know that, that, um, December 31st is National Champagne Day, which is no big surprise. No Interruption Day, No Interruptions Day, and um, Leap Second Time Adjustment Day. Apparently, this is um, this is sort of a an observance title only, according to uh, NationalDayCalendar.com. That that uh, scientists there are some years when the scientists uh, make some adjustments. Um, with the time where they, they add a second or take a second off to kind of make it all work out uh, time-wise. And uh, that's either done on June 30th or December 31st if they have to make an adjustment. It's also Make Up Your Mind Day. Should I or shouldn't I? Make, okay. I just made up my mind. I'm going to have a little bit more of this. Uh, make Up Your Mind Day. And, of course, New Year's Eve and the Universal Hour of Peace. Now, to consolidate all those, because I'm, I'm trying to pace myself here, I'm just going to toast them all. Here's to those days. And of course, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. We, we're coming up on a new year. Uh, and, you know, let me go back to the chat for just a moment. Let me check uh, the chats here before I forget. No one uh, here. I think all the actions ha happening on. Um, let's see. Jonathan says, Rick, you look great. Oh, thank you, Jonathan. I appreciate it. And Michelle has joined us in the chat. Michelle, it's great to see you. It's really good to see you. It's been a long time. Stick around. I, I, I want you to, to stay. Participate in the chat because, once again, we're going to start giving us some things away. I have something I want to give away. Um, let's see. I've got, uh, Jonathan, you won one already, but I want to give away, uh, where is it? Right here. 
You know, all year I've been talking about this Veneto uh, aerator this is from the Veneto Wine Lovers set. And uh, let me go to a, to a larger view. Uh, but this is a, a two-piece set for wine aerator. And uh, I've been talking about this a lot, and I like it. And uh, I think it's uh, the full set. It's part of a set that uh, called the Veneto Wine Lover set that uh, is available on Amazon for $19.99. But you can also buy this separately. Well, um, I picked up a couple of these. I wanted to give away a couple of wine aerators. Um, on, on, and, and they're, they're in here. This, they're really nice. It's a really nice set. And uh, I, uh, who was it? I think Jonathan won one last week, but I have one more to give away. And uh, I want to give away one to someone. I'm just going to go randomly and, uh, and give one away to anyone who, who's participating in the chat. And actually, you know what I'd like to do, because all the regulars are here. Um, I missed some of the stuff in the chat here. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Let me go back and read some of the things in the chat. But uh, for those who are participating in the chat in the first time, and you know what, Bill? You, you've been vocal in the chat this time. I'm going to send you, you win the wine aerator. I'm going to send you, my friend Bill Horton, I'm going to send you the wine aerator. You win the wine aerator. I have some other things to give away, folks, so don't, don't, uh, don't worry. But, uh, Bill, you're going to get one, the, one of these uh, wine aerators, and uh, thank you for participating in the chat. Uh, just send me, uh, just uh, email or, or, or private message me your uh, a shipping address where I can send it to after the show, and, and I'll get it over there to you, okay? Congratulations, Bill. And I'm glad you're here. I'm really glad you're here. And uh, Penny says, uh, let's see, she was following here. A good wine for the last one of the year if you like that Malbec. See if you love the Kirkland Cabernet three liter box wine. It's the best we've tasted from them. Well, now, Penny, I, I, you know, I'm not really a Costco customer. This is why I haven't found this wine up until this point, because I'm not really a Costco customer. We've been a Sam's Club member for, I've been a Sam's Club member for 25, 25, 26 years. A long, long time. 20, over 26 years, so long as she and I have been married. I've uh, been a, uh, a Sam's Club customer. And we have been members of, um, uh, what's the other one, G? Um BJ's, BJ's Wholesale Club, and uh, they have a pretty nice selection of wines. They have some pretty good prices on some of their wines, but um, and I've been to Costco. I went to Costco very, very early on. I think before I joined Sam's Club, uh, I I was a Costco member for a year, and as a matter of fact, I think my friend Jim and I went there one year. We, we uh, went out and bought some microwaves, I think. Uh, uh, each of us bought a, a microwave oven or something one year if I remember correctly, at, uh, at a Costco back in the day. But that was, uh, that was a while back. But um, I had not been to Costco. I've not stepped into a Costco in years, so I really was unaware of this wine. But now that I am, uh, maybe it's time to get a membership. I don't know. We'll see. I've been thinking about switching over from Sam's Club anyway for a while. I, I haven't really been too happy with the way Sam's handles some of their some of their things. I'm not going to go into it tonight. I, I know I usually do a rant of some sort, but I'm not going to go into that tonight. This is supposed to be a, a pre New Year's Eve celebration, so I, I'm I want to keep it light. Um, but uh, Jonathan says three liters. Get it, girl. <laughs> Uh, but for box wine, uh, but for box wine, I highly recommend it. Three liter box wine. I don't know if if she saw me bringing home, uh, you know, she sees me bringing home all these bottles of wine. She gets me a bottle of wine every once in a while. But if, 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 to see me bring home a three liter a three liter box of wine, uh, I think it's just gonna make her shake her head. <laughs> she says, "The Rick is a lost cause at this point," uh, because I'm the only person in the household who really drinks the wine. Now, She'll take a sip every now and then, but I'm the only one in the house really right now that drinks the wine. So uh, I I don't know if that I could get a three liter box of wine. I don't. I I couldn't even get through that. I don't think. Um, let's see. Penny says, uh, "Woo! National Short Film Day." Yes. Uh, 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 Jonathan says, "What kind of dog do you have, Rick?" He's a cockapoo. He's actually my son Tommy's dog. He's Tommy's dog, and uh, we've had him for. He's 13 years old. We've had him for about uh, 10 years, uh, and uh, uh, we gave him. Uh, he was uh, a birthday gift for for Tommy. 
uh, way back when. Uh, and uh, so he's really Tommy's dog, but he's really kind of a family dog too. He's he's in he's close to all of us. He he's endeared himself to all of our hearts. Uh, but he's a he's a little cockapoo. He's a very very smart dog. Very smart dog. I got a picture of him somewhere here, but I'll throw that up. Maybe I'll throw that up later. Um, anyway, uh, Lon says John got us all one for Christmas. Uh, let's see. Uh, when you, Lon, what did he give you? A, a dog? <laughs> He's got a dog for Christmas. Is that what you? Uh, Oh, okay. Uh, oh, oh, you're talking about the, the wine aerator. The wine aerator. <laughs> Matt says, Jonathan got me the same wine dongle for Christmas. Great attachment. Yeah, it, uh, they, these are really, really nice. Uh, I love these. And they're, they're great in a pinch, too. You know, you've got one, you've got one in the drawer to throw in there to, to aerate the wine. It's really nice. So my wife, Chi, gave me a brand new, she gave me a really, really nice aerator. And I, I'm, gonna, I'm going to unveil this next week. At the one, but it's really nice sitting over here on the end where you can't see it. But it's really, really nice, and I'm looking forward to trying that out at some point. Uh, anyway, so um, Bill, you've got the wine area. I'm going to make a note of that. And uh, Bill, narrator. Okay, I made a note of that there. And I have more things to give away here. So, so uh, guys, stay, stay with me, everybody. Let's see. I want to give it before we go uh, on to anything else and do some more giveaways. I also I do want to make a shout out to one person here. A shout out to a new friend of mine. Uh, you know, as you know, I've been going over the uh, national days. We we toast national days every week, and uh, just to let everyone know, it's like, well, where am I? Where do I get all the national days from? Well, there is a website, and I've mentioned this website before. It's the National Day Calendar, nationaldaycalendar.com. And uh, I go there to get my information on the national days. And they have a very good, um, they, they keep up with this very, very well. Uh, but um, I, was, um, I was in the new media show, and, and, and that's I, I attend the new media show every week, uh, uh, which is a show that's uh, for, for some of the podcasters and, and new media uh, people out there. And um, who should I meet in the chat? Uh, on the new media show uh, last week, but um, but the CEO of the National Day Calendar website, and uh, that would be uh, Marlo Anderson. And uh, Marlo was really, really, uh, and I, I let him know that that uh, I was using his calendar, and he 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 liked that, and and uh, uh, we became friends on Facebook, and. Uh, he offered um, to give me a um, an affiliate code to to uh, uh, for the 2020 wall calendar because I've got the new 2020 wall calendar coming up, and uh, I said sure. Um, and uh, so uh, the 2020 wall calendar for National Days. In fact, I'm going to purchase a couple, and I'll tell you what I'm going to do next week on the wine uh, stream for our first episode. I'm going to try and pick up a couple of these and maybe give away one or two on next week's wine stream. And we'll see if, uh, you know, see how that works. Uh, I, I have a lot of fun with these. I really do. I have a lot of fun with the National Days. They're, they're, they're really cool. And um, I think it would be great to, to give away a wall calendar. Um, uh, it's just a wall calendar with all the National Days on it for every year. But he has the 2021 is out now. You can, if you want to purchase one, you can actually go to nationaldaycalendar.com and purchase it. Um, I'm not making any money from it. right, right. That's just a free plug. But um, but Marlo and uh, uh, Anderson is the CEO there. He uh, was really kind enough to to um, uh, you know to get involved in all in that and and uh, and say hey you know. Um, We'll uh, we'll see what we can do here. And now I'm I'm uh, like I said I I'm not at this point I'm not making any money because I don't have an affiliate code yet. But I, <laughs> just to be just to be full full disclosure, I'm just sending you over there because if you like the National Days and you want to get a wall calendar, NationalDayCalendar.com is uh, the place to go. And that's a free plug for for Marlo Anderson and. Uh, I just I, it's it's a lot of fun. I like it. We'll continue to do this as we go forward. Uh, but just a shout out shout out to Marlo. Here's you happy um, 
uh, was it? Uh, oh, yeah, Happy New Year, Marlo. <laughs> and to 2020 and more, more national days. I have a lot of fun with those. Okay, uh, another giveaway. You know, um, I have also this emergency compact crank radio, and I've been talking about this for for some time now. Of course, I have one. Uh, that I use, and it's actually uh, where did I put it? It's in my bedroom at the moment, but because uh, I was using it to using the flashlight the other day to look behind the the TV monitor so I could hook some stuff up to it. But um, I usually keep it here on my desk or somewhere close by. These things are great. I'm going to give one of these away. This is uh, this is a Midland E Ready emergency uh, compact crank radio, and it has multiple uh, power options. You can uh, power it with uh, with uh, so it has a solar power cells on the top that you can power it with that. It has uh, a crank so you can if there's no power at all you can you can crank up some power. Uh, it also has lithium batteries in it and uh, it'll take I think it'll take regular batteries as well. And it's um, you can power in a pinch if you lose power if you had an emergency uh, you know hurricane or something and our power goes out in the storm or whatever. Uh, this thing comes in really, really handy. We've used it several times. We've used it a number of times, actually, when the power has gone out and for, for an extended period of time, like uh, for a few hours or for the day. And uh, we've used it to charge our cell phones with. And, and uh, it has some Cree LEDs, which are very, very powerful LEDs in this thing. And uh, we've used it when it got dark. We had it on. And, uh, of course, the weather stations. It it's, uh, supports all the NOAA weather channels, so you can get the latest weather information. It has a built-in AM, FM radio. Now, the, the one that I have, this is the ER-210. The, uh, I have the ER-310, and that has a dog whistle on it. So if you get stuck somewhere uh, and, you know, they have the searchers have to come and find you, you can activate the dog whistle and they have the dogs out there. They can they can locate you. This one doesn't have the dog whistle, but it has uh, it has a lot of other it's packed with a lot of other emergency features on it. I recommend getting something like this for your car. You get stuck on the road somewhere, uh, especially at night in the middle of nowhere. Uh, this this is a very, very handy thing to keep in the trunk of your car. Or the glove compartment. This will. This is small, so it'll actually fit in the glove compartment of, of most vehicles. So it's a really handy. Well, I'm, I'm giving one away tonight. That's the grand prize. Now, hopefully, I'm giving it away tonight. I tried to give it away last week, but we didn't. Uh, that, that didn't happen. Uh, I think we were trying to do it. We're trying to do a trivia question, and I think the trivia question last week was was uh, who? What was the name of the robot um, on the movie The Day the Earth Stood Still? And, uh, uh, and just to let you know, the robot's name is Gort. <laughs> I know, I've seen the movie. It is a classic um, sci-fi film. And I also made a misstep. I, I was saying that the remake was, was uh, Tom Cruise. That was not Tom Cruise. Uh, uh, that was Keanu Reeves was in the remake of The Day the Earth Stood Still, just to uh, straighten that out. See, I, I, if I'm wrong, I'll give out my, my uh, corrections. <laughs> but I... Um, and that was Keanu Reeves that was in the remake of The Day That the Earth Stood Still. And uh, he played, I think he played the character Klaatu, who was the, the guy in the spaceship, the, the spaceman that came from outer space. And then the robot Gort was, uh, uh, I don't know who played Gort, but uh, he, um, he, that was the, for the remake. But the original, the original is a, a classic. And I personally prefer the original over the remake, as I do for a lot of films. Um, when I was mentioning Tom Cruise, I was getting my, my sci-fi films uh, mixed up. I think Tom Cruise was uh, when they did the remake of War of the Worlds, and uh, which I did not care for that remake at all. I've seen the original War of the Worlds. The original one was real as a classic. The remake, uh, not so much. I really didn't care for that much at all. Anyway, uh, I'm rambling on because that's what this is. And those of you who are joining me for the first time, once again, I do have show notes. I do have a show. This is Drink with Rick. But this is not a really structured show. This is a stream of consciousness kind of show. And uh, if you're a podcaster and you're joining me for the first time, you're saying, oh, man, he, what an unprofessional this guy is. Well, you know what? Uh, first of all, I'm an independent podcaster. <laughs> Second of all, Oh, actually, okay. I take it back. I am a professional podcaster because I do, 
I do it for a living. It's part of my my day job as well. So I do actually podcast for a living. But uh, the thing is that uh, for most of my personal shows, I'm an an indie podcaster. And second, um, second, this is not that kind of podcast. This is just something I'm doing for fun. This is not a, a structured thing. I'm not scripting it. I'm not, you know, I'm just doing that just kicking back, relax on a Saturday night with my friends, having some wine, having some food, talking, and just having a good time. That's what this show is about. And and, and the show isn't about me anyway. This show is about us, you and me, uh, getting together, just having a good time. So this is an unstructured show. So for that reason, uh, if you if you want to complain about my delivery, <laughs> go ahead, but I, I don't care. <laughs> Um, because that's not what I'm doing here. That's what I'm, what I'm trying to do. Anyway, so uh, giveaway. So we, I've got a couple of T-shirts to give away. I want to give away some T-shirts. I really do. And do we have any podcasters in the in the chat right now? Anybody who's a podcaster? I know I tried to give away a T-shirt to um, my friend Gordon last week, who is a podcaster, and uh, he already had a couple of these shirts. Uh, this is a Blueberry shirt from my good friend Todd Cochran, who is the CEO of Blueberry. Uh, gave me a few of these shirts to give away. Uh, I've known Todd for a number of years, uh, for, um, pretty much almost since I started podcasting. Uh, and that was um, almost 14 years ago. And I wanted to give away one of those shirts. I have an extra large. I have a couple of smalls to give away to anybody who wants it. Um, and I have a couple of shirts from Buy Two Way Radios. Also, uh, the, the Emergency Crank Radio, we're going to give that away last thing. But uh, just for full disclosure, for full disclosure, I am the product manager for Buy Two Way Radios. I, uh, so I, I work for the company, okay? I work for Buy Two Way Radios. And, uh, of course, uh, I have a... We have a promo code. If you want to go buy, if you're into two-way radios, if you buy, uh, if you want to buy an emergency radio, if you don't win tonight, you want to buy emergency radios. Um, we have a promo code called Wine Show. The promo code is Wine Show. So if you want to buy a, uh, a radio, or if you if you're into radios, or if you need two-way radios for anything, for your business, for personal use, whatever, Wine Show will get you a five percent discount. Okay, just use the code, promo code Wine Show at checkout, and you'll get that discount. Uh, once again, I am uh, uh, I, I work for By Two Way Radio, so uh, I'm not really so much being. I don't know, I guess I'm be paid for this, <laughs> but uh, I guess I'm a paid chill. I don't know, but uh, um, it, it's just something my boss said. Here, you can have a you know uh, the podcast you're doing. You can have a promo code and, and give uh, give your viewers and listeners uh, a discount. So that's what, that's what I'm doing. So um, anyway, uh, use it in good health. Definitely use it because I mean, anytime you can save some money, anytime you can save some money buying anything is 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 a good thing. That that always helps, and I'm happy to share that with you. Uh, you know, people use two-way radios for a lot of different things. Um, you know, hunters use them. I, I know, uh, I think, uh, Lon, uh, Lon, you and, and Jonathan, uh, I think you're, you you do some hunting, right? A lot of hunters use two-way radios when they're hunting. Now, some hunters, they'll use the wrong kinds of radios because they think, well, I just need a two-way radio out there when I'm hunting. Um, and sometimes they'll use a radio that's not really for, that's not really intended for use by hunters. It might be, might not even be, uh, uh, might require a license or something that, that a lot of runner, uh, hunters don't have to use. And, but there are plenty of different radios out there that are license free, that don't require one, and that you can choose from, and that are actually made, designed with hunters in mind. Uh, there are also radios for, if you're uh, if you're into camping and uh, fishing and if you're boating if you're you know you have a boat and uh, you know marine radios we've got those and uh, we've got radios for just about everybody businesses you yeah, have running a business and um, my son Tommy uses a radio at, at work where he works uh, the big box stores you go to the big box stores and they're all carrying radios um, total wine. They use the uh, uh, Motorola CLS radios at Total Wine everywhere. I go in there and I see them all using the radios with the headsets. And um, 
uh, it, it, they are very, very useful for a lot of things. So, so radios are, um, are a big deal. And uh, if you need a radio for your business or for personal use, whatever, use the Coma code. And I went too, too long on that. <laughs> it wasn't intending to be a commercial pitch, but it's basically, uh, but there you go. Let's see. Uh, Courtney says, let's see. Well, you know, Courtney, uh, I saw Courtney says, Courtney said a few things. Um, let's see. Courtney says, our power goes out all the time. And uh, you are, you know, if you have, I don't know if you have Duke Energy, if you have Duke Energy like we do, uh, it does go out from time to time when you least expect it. Now, down in where I work down in uh, Rock Hill, power goes off at weird times. It's uh, like it, it'll be storming outside. And sometimes, you know, you expect the power to go out and it's storming and then it won't go out. And then other times it'll be a bright, sunny day and all of a sudden, poof. The whole building's out. <laughs> no power in the whole building, and uh, the um, and sometimes we lose internet too, which is bad for us because we're basically an internet-based uh, uh, company, and uh, they uh, the, uh, the services down there just uh, you just never know what when the power is going to go out. You really don't. Um, and, and fortunately for us, uh, at work, you know, we have plenty of these radios here. It's not a problem. We, we, we got them all out right away, and we've got, we got some power. Um, but uh, at home, you know, we, we don't have too many power issues at home. Well, okay, knock on wood. <laughs> don't, don't have too many power issues at home. Our, our issue is, is basically if, uh, if the Internet goes out and... Um, uh, that that's always a, a big big problem, but when it does go out, when the power does go out, it's 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 pretty catastrophic. You know, you don't really appreciate, you don't really appreciate these things like the water and the power and the internet and things like that until you you lose it and then all of a sudden it's just it's disastrous. It's it's really disastrous. It's something that we don't even think about. You know, we, we walk over, we walk in the room, flick on a light. Uh, and we've we've got light. Uh, you know, you sit down at the computer. You've got internet. Boom! You're online. You want to watch a movie. You're streaming a movie on Netflix or, or Amazon or something. Boom! It's right there. If you're texting somebody, boom! You know, you're sending or receiving texts. If if you go to the the bathroom or wash your hands or something like that, or or you're you're taking a shower, just turn on the water and you expect the water to be there. Um, I mean, we, we've, we've become so accustomed to having everything right there when we want it at the flick of a switch or at the turn of a, uh, of a spigot. Um, and, and when something happens, uh, that, that, uh, where, where we don't have it, even for a very, very short period of time, it's pretty much panic time. Everybody goes into panic mode, right? And, um, you know that's 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 why stuff like this comes in handy. But it got me to thinking um, a little while back about that. Just how how much we rely on everything, but how much we take everything for granted. And uh, you know, if we lose one thing, even for a few minutes, it's it's just the whole, the whole world stops. Everything just comes to an end. And just to think that. 125 years ago, or 150 years ago, um, you know, the, the, you know, we were driving our horses and buggies. We didn't have the cars. We we didn't have the internet. Well, we didn't have the internet 30 years ago, uh, 20 years ago. We we didn't have we didn't have electricity uh, 150 years ago. We didn't have uh, you know, running water was something that only came about in the last couple hundred years and in most places just in big cities and most most places were rural and and relied on well water that had to be hand pumped and it's it's funny how just in the span of a few generations how we've all become so not just accustomed to having everything right when we want it but but it's almost like it's our our right or something like we 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 demand it and if it's not there it's that there's something wrong you know it's that's uh, uh and 
that's not the case. I mean, a couple hundred years ago, people didn't have this stuff and they lived just fine. <laughs> you know, they were they were just fine. But uh, here we are today. I don't know. Are we all just a bunch of marshmallows now? I don't know. I know I I am I am. If I lose power or internet or whatever, it's uh, right away. It's I mean it's pretty much freak out mode for all of us. So, but that's another reason to be thankful for what we have, to be thankful for everything we have. Because you never know, tomorrow we might have an EMP event that comes uh, comes across, whether it's man-made or a natural event, and just take out all the power, all of the electronic stuff. And, uh, you know, we might, have, uh, we might have a huge shortage or no water in the tap or, or uh, you know, we, that sort of thing. And uh, it could all be gone tomorrow. And the thing is, we don't think about it because most of the time we're so accustomed to having it right there that we just kind of take it all for granted. And, and we can't. We can't really do that. And I said I wasn't going on a rant, but that's kind of my rant. <laughs> but you know, look, going to this new year, it just get, it makes me appreciate this sort of thing even more. Let's see. Uh, go back to the chat. Uh, let's see. Uh, um Jonathan said, we had bear for dinner tonight. Did you have bear lawn for dinner? I know you're a hunter. You you, you do some hunting. Uh, was that something you, you caught? Uh, Jonathan said, lawn fed us bear, bear for dinner tonight. And Courtney says, I may be a marshmallow, but at least I'm a toasted marshmallow. <laughs> Here's to you, Courtney. Well, look, I want to give away something else. I've got a, I've got a T-shirt here. I got this T-shirt here. It says, "Do it with frequency." I designed this T-shirt myself with my with my boss. Uh, now this, I know it's 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 related to radios, but you know, do it with frequency. It's it's uh, uh, take it any way you want, <laughs> but it's uh, and it's a T-shirt. It's a free T-shirt. You can't be free, right? You can't be free. So I'm gonna give away one of these. Um. I just I just give one away randomly here in the chat. I don't know who. Uh, let's see who do we have here in the chat that uh, that has been here tonight. It's contributed, and I missed that. But Ron's in the chat. Ron, it's good to see you in the chat. I hope you're still there. I, I missed uh, I missed that earlier, uh, but uh, I'm glad you're here. And uh, Ron, uh, let's see. Tell you what, um, Christina's in the chat, and uh, let's see, Penny. Penny, do you have one of these T-shirts? If not, I can send you one. Uh, Michelle, or how about Michelle? I'll tell you what. Um, anybody who wants one of these T-shirts, first person who wants one of these T-shirts and said, okay, now I, I guess I have to say somebody who, who isn't already getting something, okay? Somebody who isn't already getting something. Uh, first person who, who tells me they want a T-shirt, he gives me the shirt size, gets one of these Do It With Frequency t-shirts, and uh, and I'll send you one right away. Um, I'll, I'll leave that open for you here for the t-shirt. All right, but to be fair, what should what should we do to give away the uh, the grand prize here, the compact radio? There's, there is one other uh, prize. In the back, and I have this uh, right, right here. I... Uh, a while back, I reviewed this book called Start Ugly. Uh, Start Ugly. This is by uh, my friend Chris Kremetsos, who is also the co-founder of PodFest that we're going to in 2020. And uh, he wrote this good book. I, I read this book cover to cover, and uh, I really love this book. And it helped me uh, get started uh, on a couple of other projects that I have been... Uh, I don't want to say neglecting to do. I've been procrastinating on. Let me say that, for lack of a better term. But I want to send a a, a copy of Start Ugly, and I'll tell you who. Uh, one thing I'm going to do. I know who I'm going to send uh, this copy of Start Ugly to. I know someone who could use this book, Start Ugly, and uh, I'll tell you what. I will send this book. Uh, I'm not saying who could use it, but uh, Michelle, uh, I'm going to send you a copy of this book. Start ugly. If you can send me your your uh, 
your uh, a shipping address for you. I'm going to send you a copy of this book, Start Ugly. Uh, I think that that you would appreciate this book. I think a lot of people would uh, could use this book, but I think you would really appreciate it. And because uh, I know you've kind of you've uh, you're pretty enterprising, and I think that you would appreciate uh, the message in that book as well. Uh, Matt says XL. Uh, Matt, you don't, no, you haven't won anything yet, right? Okay, I'll tell you what, Matt, uh, I'll send you the, I actually, I'm actually holding an XL right here, so I'll send you this shirt, Matt, how about that? I'll send you this shirt over, and uh, I'll get that to you this week. So, Matt wins the start, uh, uh, the, sorry, the uh, Duel with Frequency shirt, and uh, Courtney says, I, I need the flashlight. <laughs> <laughs> we can all use a flashlight sometimes. We we really can. Uh, you just never know when you're going to need one. There, you know what? The thing about flashlights is you just never know. Uh, you, you take that's something else you take for granted. You have a flashlight. Everybody has a flashlight around the house, and then they forget about them. They leave the batteries in them. The batteries get corroded or they die out or something. Then they just stick them in the drawer, and everybody forgets about the flashlight until the power goes out or until they really need it for something important. And then they pull out the flashlight out of the drawer and turn it on. It's like, uh oh, does not work. And it's not. You know, try to open it up. The batteries fall out. They're all corroded and all that kind of stuff. And you don't have any other spare batteries, and it's a mess. Um, that's why you should always keep more than one flashlight handy and also kind of keep the batteries fresh. Here's a tip. When you're not using the flashlight, if you don't use the flashlight for a long period of time, this goes. Uh, this is true of the radios and things like that. Anything electronic like that that runs on batteries that you store away, always take the batteries out. Always take the batteries out. If you're going to store it for a long period of time, you know you're not going to necessarily need it. Always take the batteries out. Now, it's okay to keep the batteries in the same drawer or nearby, but take them out of the unit first. Uh, and I'll tell you why. Because, uh, because it's mainly because of corrosion, but also to, to keep the batteries uh, from, from draining unnecessarily. Because even if the batteries are in the unit, if the unit is not on, you can trickle drain the batteries for some some device. Now, not every device, not every device is like that. But there are some devices that even if the batteries are in there, and if you're not, if you don't actually have the item on, and it can trickle drain the device over a period of time. Like for instance, this Mercy Craig radio, it has a clock on it. That's one of the things I didn't mention. It has a, a timer and a clock uh, on it. And even though the, the unit itself isn't on, the clock is still there. So over a period of time, you can drain the batteries just from leaving the, just because of the clock. And uh, so what you want, really want to do is you want to uh, take the batteries out, store them in a cool, dry place, and keep some spare batteries handy. But so that when you need it, like for instance with the flashlight, if you need, if you need the flashlight all of a sudden, you can open the drawer. It only takes you 10, 20 seconds to put the batteries in the flashlight, most flashlights. But, but it only takes you a few seconds to put the batteries in the flashlight, screw the flashlight in place, you know, put the bottom back on or whatever, and then you've got your batteries in your flashlight. But if you leave in the flashlight too long, particularly for long periods of time, uh, they can become corroded to the point where they're completely unusable, and they can damage the flashlight. To where all of a sudden you you not only have bad batteries but you have a flashlight that's no good anymore because the corroded batteries have actually ruined the flashlight. So uh, really, if you're going to put anything away, any any whether it's a radio or a flashlight or a you know uh, whatever it is, uh, if you're going to put it away for a long time, take the batteries out. It's important to take the batteries out and keep a few spares handy. Uh, in case you need it. That's a little tip for me. Courtney says, I learned about batteries corroding the hard way. I needed my flashlight and the batteries were all messed up. It was a nightmare. Yes, uh, Courtney, um, I came from the school of hard knocks as well. We were, um, we, we must have been classmates because uh, everything I learned, and, and that's what I tell everybody, uh, everything I learned about life, I learned the hard way <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> 
Yes, I learned about the batteries the hard way as well. And now I teach this to others because, uh, in, in my business anyway. Uh, but I've been there, done that. I, I, I teach it because I, yeah, I learned the hard way. Frosty's joined us in the chat. Frosty, it's good to see you. Uh, say hi. Say hi. And um, I tell you what, say hi to me and I'll send you a t-shirt. I'll send you a, I'll t send you this one. It's not the wavelength, it's how you use it. <laughs> This is, uh, tell me your size, send me a place to, in, in uh, Frosty, because it's good to see you, Frosty. It really is. Uh, send, send me your shirt size and where I can send it. I'll send you a two-way radio, uh, or uh, it, it is related to two-way radios, but it's not the wavelength, it's how you use it. And uh, uh, it's, a, it's a cleaner message than the other one. <laughs> but I want to give those away. Uh, Matt says, I was trying to open a wine bottle in the dark, needed a flashlight. Guess what stabbed my hand? Ooh. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, oof, that's a lesson to learn the hard way, too. Yeah, that's not uh, good to do that. Um, you know what, Matt? I've opened a wine bottle in the dark before, too. And I didn't stab my hand, but um, I, I, I pretty much, I, I, I think I got close to breaking the bottle in the process. <laughs> Uh, that, yeah, that's never good to do that in the dark. Courtney says, class of 74, Rick. Yeah, I'm a uh, class of, uh, oh, that's dating me now. Let's see. Uh, I think uh, it's been a lifelong, I've been going to school of hard knocks all my life, and I think I still take uh, residual courses there. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I, I take some, uh, I take some residual courses there, or what do you, what do you call the uh, the uh, refresher courses from time to time. I take refresher courses in the School of Hard Knocks and different things nowadays, but but uh, yeah, still do. Uh, Lon says Matt stabbed my hand in the dark as well. Oh, I am gonna have to hear this story sometime, uh, guys. <laughs> it doesn't sound like it uh, ended well. Did you ever get the wine bottle open? That's important. <laughs> No, I, I don't want you to hurt yourselves, but uh, uh, did you ever get the wine bottle open? Uh, you know, I mean, if, was it worth it? You know, if you're gonna if, if you're gonna stab your hand opening a bottle of wine, uh, you got to at least uh, make it worthwhile and and get that bottle open, right? <laughs> uh, oh boy. Okay. All right. So. Um, I think it's about time to, pretty much just about time to close the show here for the night. But I do want to give this away. And uh, I did give away, the, I'm, I'm giving away the Start Ugly book to Michelle. Um, and um, if, she, if she will respond, if she will respond, if, she, if Michelle does not respond, I will, uh, I will give it away another time. But uh, uh, Michelle, if you're still watching and you're responding, uh, you've, you've won the book there. Um, but the crank radio, crank radio, we've, that's still up in the air. Should we do another trivia question? I, I really would like to choose, uh, I really would like to give it away to someone who has not previously, uh, up to this point, spoken up. <laughs> um, and let's see, uh, Penny, there's, uh, who else is here in the chat? Let me check YouTube. Nothing going on YouTube. People are watching. We've got people watching YouTube, but uh, nobody's afraid. Uh, don't be afraid to speak up. Anything going on Twitch? Let's see Twitter. Uh, people watching on Twitter. Uh, that's about it. But uh, Courtney needs that T-shirt. Jonathan, Jonathan says uh, Courtney needs that T-shirt. Uh, I, I was going back up in the chat, but I just saw that. Um Okay, let me let me hear more about this story about the wine. Uh, Matt says I opened it on Lion's Head, and uh, did, did so. You did you did get the the bottle open? I, I hope. Uh, did did you stop to to give yourself first aid first, or did you just go ahead and skip that and drink the wine? I mean, I, I want to know about this. <laughs> Hopefully you get. Hopefully you had the first aid first, and then then got back to the wine. But uh, once again, folks, we're drinking the. Uh, this is the Kirkland 2018 Malbec that was given to me as a gift by my friends Michael and Trudy, and I want to thank them for it. In fact, here is to Michael and Trudy. 
I want to thank them for this. It's, it's a good wine. It's um, this is a good wine to for parties. I think this is a good wine for parties. Um, it it pairs pretty well with the meat. It uh, it goes okay with it, everything. Goes okay with the uh, Trader Joe's creamy Gouda. You can't go wrong with that. Uh, I think it's um, not quite so much with barbecue sauce, but if you have a barbecued meat, I think it's fine with. It's, um, I, you know, I haven't tried it with the cookie yet, as a matter of fact. We're going to try the, co the cookie. Let's do that now. This is a peanut butter cookie baked this evening by my son Tommy and his friend Nick, uh, the hosts of the Cube Command podcast. Let's try it. It's peanut butter. Hmm. Good, by the way, actually. Mm. Turned out very well. I love peanut butter cookies. I love oatmeal cookies. Come to think of it, I just love cookies. But uh, let's try this. Yeah, I can... Uh, <clears throat> let me finish some more of that. Mm. Yeah, I think it actually goes pretty well with a peanut butter cookie. Mm. Yeah, I'll say uh, Malbec goes good with a peanut butter cookie or a chocolate chip cookie if you have one of those. Let's see. Um, Matt says Courtney's threatening to boycott if she doesn't win that radio. <laughs> well, I don't think threats are going to win the radio, but um, I tell you what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give this. I want to give this away to someone I haven't given some something uh, away to yet. Uh, Jonathan says, oh, the creamy Gouda. You know what? The creamy Gouda is getting a little warm. As a matter of fact, it's getting warm in here. I had to turn on the AC just before I started the wine stream. Came up here and it was hot. If you hadn't noticed, uh, I'm, I've been sweating a little bit because um, it is a little warm in here tonight. It's a little unusually warm here in Charlotte uh, the last week or so. Uh, they were talking about Christmas. Christmas Day, it was, it was like 60-some-odd degrees, which is pretty interesting it wasn't bad i mean we got to go out and tommy got to go out and walk the dog and um <clears throat> he's been able to do that for a couple of days this week uh, it's just been that warm and it's been a warm day today now i think we've got some rain coming but it's just been a, a, a really nice nice beautiful day today now i say that with some trepidation because i know that there are folks um further west that are having to deal with some storms and i i understand that um and uh i think there might who knows there might be a cold front coming down the road but um but it's been pretty nice today and i'll have to say i really appreciate the beautiful day that, that we had today but unusually warm for this time of year unusually warm so um, we'll see what uh, kind of a, a, a week, the first week of, of 2020 uh, brings us. Speaking of 2020, I want to talk about uh, a little bit, go back a little bit to the first year of the podcast, of the podcast, the uh, podcast too, the wine stream. Courtney says, uh, not going to boycott Rick. I'm just enjoying the show. I appreciate that, Courtney. I really appreciate that. Um, you know, I... Um, I want to say that that this year we started off once again uh, in February, the end of February, uh, just doing this. Just I just did it on a lark for fun. And when I went to Podfest 2019, which was in March, um, I told folks about it, and 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 they said, "Oh, that's a great idea. You've got to you got to keep doing that." And of course, everybody that was in the the first stream, they said, you got to keep this up. This is a great idea. So when I got back from Podfest, I was, I had committed, I said, I'm committed to it. I'm going to do a, a year or two of the show. We'll see how it goes. Well, I'll do a year and see how, what happens. And uh, if, if it's still fun at the end of the year, then I'll do another year. So yeah, yeah, I don't belong to a TV network or anything like that. I may I make the decisions on my own. So uh, if the show gets renewed, it gets renewed, right? Um, but it kind of depended on how this year went with the wine stream. And on this wine stream, the Saturday Night Wine Stream, on Drink with Rick, um, 
as you can see behind me um let me go back to the other camera here as you can see behind me uh, I opened up 41. This is the 42nd bottle of. Well, actually, I take the back because we opened up a, uh, an extra bottle or two. I think we opened up the uh, last week. We opened up that eggnog wine. So we actually have uh, a couple of extra bottles of wine here. I think I opened two bottles of wine here, didn't I? One or two. We did an extra show. We did an extra show during the week here. So. <clears throat> We have um, 42, maybe 43 bottles up there in the back, and I have one right here. So uh, pretty much uh, I've opened up about 43 bottles of wine this year, maybe. 44, I guess it would be 44. Uh, and we did 42 episodes of the show. And No, excuse me, 43. Anyway... There's a lot of wine. I've opened up a lot of wine. And um, I've tasted a review of them, paired them with food, and we just had a lot of fun. During the course of the year, I've had rants. I've done, I've ranted about all kinds of different things. And we've uh, talked about a lot of different things. A lot of people visiting the show had a lot of, made a lot of new friends in the show. And just had a great time overall. It's been a, a great time, and uh, I've learned a lot of things about wine. I hope you've learned a few things about wine. I've been uh, learning some things as I go along about wine. Now, you know, I've been, as I told you before, I've been drinking wine since I was a kid, literally. <laughs> uh, some of some of it unbeknownst to my parents. <laughs> uh but I've been drinking a wine a long, long time. Being Italian, of Italian descent, my last name is Savoia, of Italian descent, um, it was almost expected in our family, it was almost expected of us to be wine drinkers because we are of a, uh, you know, of an Italian family, and that's what Italians do. They drink wine, right? Among other things. Um, that, anyway, that's the, the typical um, typecasting. Uh, but uh, Italians drink wine, right? Well, we did, Italian family. I don't know of anyone in our family that um, does not drink wine or, or some alcoholic beverage and, and, and hasn't uh, through their lives. My dad was a very heavy wine drinker. He was um, too much, too much, which is why I do stress drinking responsibly, and drinking uh, in moderation. He was too heavy a wine drinker, and he drank other uh, things too. Um, but uh, our family, we're a family of wine drinkers. We're Italians. We're, you know, a part of Italian. We, 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 we've, we, that was the culture that we grew up in, and uh, that's what we were used to, and that's what we did. Wine, not just wine drinking, but wine making. Uh, my dad made wine. Uh, I helped him. I and, and at least one of my other brothers at, at various points in time would, would help him make wine. We were involved in the wine making process actively. And uh, I learned a lot of things. I learned some things about wine when I was a kid. And it stuck with me growing up. But I was not a wine aficionado. I was not a wine, I was not a trained sommelier or anything like that. I was just, uh, I just enjoyed the wines. I knew what I liked to drink. And, and that's, what I, that's what I did. Um, and so having this wine stream for the last year has been a very educational experience for me because I've learned a lot of things about wine that my dad never taught me. Uh, I learned a lot of things about wine that um, that um, uh, other people, that my friends and other people that, that drank wine and, and people I associated with that were also uh, wine drinkers, they never told me or taught me things I never really learned. And I visited a number of wineries and you go, you take the tour and you learn a thing or two here and there. But there were a lot of things that were kind of eye-opening to me during the last year that I didn't really know before. 
And hopefully, and, and when I get on the stream every week, I, I try to pass some of that on to you. <clears throat> so hopefully you've learned some things from this stream as well. And you know what? My friends at Wine Store, my friends at Wine Store have, have helped me in that education as well because uh, a lot of them are very knowledgeable. I go into the Wine Store uh, just about every week. I visit them. And um, <clears throat> Trish and Molly, people there, uh, Matt, uh, other people there that, that, that are in the wine. And there's several mats that work in the wine store, apparently. Uh, lots of mats. Uh, but they, they, uh, they've taught me some things about wine. Um, <clears throat> definitely Trish has set me straight on, on, on how to pronounce, and Molly too, on how to pronounce some of these French wines, because uh, I, I, I just uh, have been terrible at that. You've heard me, during the course of the year, you've heard me, op you've watched me open the bottle, these bottles of wine. You've heard me butcher the French language, and at, terms, and at times the Spanish language, and sometimes the English language, uh, especially when I've had quite a bit of it. And uh, we've learned a few things together, and it's been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of fun. I've en I thoroughly enjoyed doing this wine stream every week. And I tell you what, I never could have done this without support from my wife, Chi, who's been very, very supportive of me, uh, keeps an eye on me, <laughs> but she's been very supportive of me, and I do appreciate that. I love you, honey. I'm talking to my wife now, okay? Uh, I couldn't do this without uh, my friends who, who come in every week and visit and watch and who listen to the podcast later. I couldn't do this without any of you. Um, because, once again, this isn't really about me. It's about us getting together and doing this together. This is a journey we take together. This is just not about me, Okay. And I don't want it to be about me. I want it to be about you and me, all of us. And uh, I want to say this has been a lot of fun doing this all year. And through 2019, as I see the, the year 2019 come to a close, I know that there's a lot of uh, discord and, and, and a, lot of, a lot of troubles in the world and a lot of things going on. Um, but what I hope that I have accomplished so far with this is not to, to add to this discord, but to kind of alleviate it somewhat, bring people together. And wine does that. Wine can help bring people together, and we can all find some common things that we all love and that we all agree upon, that we all can, can uh, participate in. Uh, and and we can all do do together. And I, I'm hoping that, I'm hoping that in some small way that we've done this. And and uh, I'm looking forward to for that reason that I'm going. And I told you this before. I, I, I told everybody before that that as long as this continues to be fun, I'm going to keep doing it. But as soon as it stops being fun, as soon as it stops being uh, something that that that's helpful, then I'll stop doing it. Uh, so far, what I've seen in that, it, it, I, I've had a great time. I've had a blast. I've had a mostly because you're here. I'm not doing this by myself. You're here with me, and I really appreciate that. And I appreciate you. I appreciate you. And when I'm talking about you, I'm talking about each and every one of you. And I want to say that uh, that uh, as uh, for the 2020. We're going to continue to do this. We're going to we're going to continue to do this until uh, you know for for I'm, I've decided that I'm going to go and, and try this for for a while longer, and um, hopefully it'll get even better. I, I hope it'll get even better. Um, and Patty is joining us in the cha chat. Patty, it's great to see you. Say hi, Patty. Please say hi. You know what? Patty is someone who's shown up in the chat a number of times, and. Um, I tell you, once again, I have one more item to give away. And uh, I want to give this away before I close the chat tonight, before I close the wine stream. But uh, uh, Patty, someone that uh, who, who's shown up a number of times, has watched me on the stream. Um, but uh, how are you doing, Patty? You doing okay? And I, I hope you are. 
Lon says, yay. <laughs> Look, uh, we're going to do this another year. And, um, and I want to tell you, uh, just to give you a, a little bit of a heads up on year two, I want to take this a little bit farther. And I want your input. I want your input because this you're part of the show. It's just not about me. You're part of the show. So I want your input too. I've had suggestions, and I continue to to look at these suggestions. One of the things I want to do uh, for the next year, I want to review some wine clubs. Um, I have been asked about that, wine clubs. And there's been a lot of talk about different wine clubs. I've looked at a few of them before. Um, wine clubs, are they good? Are they bad? Are they a ripoff? Are they, are they actually helpful? Are they, you know, we'll look at them, and we'll review a few of them. We'll, we'll look at those. Wine clubs are the sort of thing that's kind of expensive to get into, kind of a big deal. Uh, so, so and, and for some of them, you kind of have to commit yourself to those things. And, and the value proposition in a wine club is not always what you think it is. So we're going to look at these. And, you know, I get pitched. I, I'll t I, real, I will tell you this. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking for sponsors and things like that sometimes. But... Um, Wine clubs are the easiest things to get sponsorships for, but I have not got, gotten into those because um, I have a lot of mixed feelings about wine clubs, and uh, I don't want to get locked into promoting a wine club or, or having a sponsor as a wine club per se, and, unless I really, really believe. You know, I just don't want sponsors. I want sponsors for... Uh, you know, for a product or service or, or whatever it is, a wine or whatever, something that I believe in, something that I feel comfortable promoting to you. And um, with the wine clubs, yes, there's plenty of sponsorships and affiliate programs and things like that available for wine clubs. I haven't touched any of those. I've looked at a few of them, but I haven't touched them so far because um, I don't know. I, I have some mixed feelings about that. So I'm not real. Uh, we're going to we're going to review some and we'll probably do it on my own dime. But uh, I'm I, I, like I said, this is this is a, as a public service, not as a uh, as a promoter of any of these wine clubs. We'll see. But I do want to take a look at reviewing some of the wine clubs. I want to interview a few people for, um, you know, people in the wine business. Either, either way, in a winery, uh, people that that uh, that make wine, people that uh, grow grapes, people that uh, that that run wine businesses, and it's been it's been suggested to me several times. So we'll have some interviews. Maybe we'll have some people on the show that that uh, uh, that, that can participate in the show that uh, that are involved in the wine business in one way or the other. We'll do some of that as well. Um, I want to talk more about uh, the winemaking process. I think that that's a good thing to learn more about the actual process that goes into making wine. I'm a little concerned about the wine industry, uh, and there's some aspects of the wine industry that, that give me a reason to, to pause and think twice before I open that bottle. So uh, in, in some places, there might be some places where it's better to get a wine from that region or that or, or a wine from that country than, than maybe other places. Um, th there are a lot of things to consider in the wine industry. And you know, of course, the, uh, China has become more aggressive as far as entering the wine business is concerned very recently. So I'd like to talk about that somewhat and, and check that out and find out more about that and see if that's really a viable uh if, if, if that's uh, that's something that we uh, maybe that's worth checking into as far as uh, trying uh, Chinese wines or or not. Um, very very interesting stuff. I want to learn more about different uh, wine regions and grapes. I think one of the things that we're going to do in the next next year is maybe talk about more you know a little more educational stuff about uh, what all the different kinds of grapes there are. And maybe some of the different wine regions where these grapes are grown and, and things like that. I think that could be very, very interesting. What do you think? You, you think that uh, you might, you're interested in learning more about that sort of th thing? Um, uh, we'll, we'll give that a try. But these are just some of the things I want to try in the next year.
I mean, I'm not going to make it all dry. I mean, well, of course, the wines, I often have them dry, but we're not going to keep it all dry stuff. We're going to have fun like we've been doing, but um, they're just some things that I want to throw into the mix and maybe make this uh, a little more entertaining and educational. I guess you could say education, edutainable, edutainable, whatever. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think. Contact me at rick at savoyamedia.com. I'll probably change my, I'll probably add a rick at drinkwithrick.com at some point. I just haven't gotten around to that. But uh, Rick, for right now, rick at savoyamedia.com. And at uh, www.drinkwithrick.com. Um, any other last minute things? I really want to give away this this thing. Um, Patty, uh, you're going to say hi? Hello, Patty. I hope you say hi. Uh, let's see. Matt says, cheers, Rick. We look forward to watching in 2020. I, I look forward to having you there with me. Courtney says, I was getting a bit worried there for a minute. Thanks, Rick, for keeping it going. <laughs> no worries, Courtney. We'll be doing this. Jonathan says, looking forward to 2020, Rick. And Courtney says, I kind of teared up there for a minute. <laughs> I didn't mean to sound too sappy, although my wife says I'm a pretty sappy guy. Lon says, will you have Matt on? He has so much knowledge. You know what? I'm talking to Matt. I'm going to talk to him some more. And, uh, well, I'm, I'm sure we're going to have Matt on at some point. I would love to have Matt on the show. And we can sit there and talk wine and do some stuff. Um, if not in person, at least remotely, we'll, we'll work that up. I, I have a couple of things I have to do here to, if we do it remotely. If we do it here, he's more than welcome to, to do it live here with me. If we do it remotely... Um, there are a couple of things I'm going to have to, to do to upgrade some of my equipment to, to, uh, to make that work very well. But uh, we'll see what we can do there. We'll see what we can do there and on. Uh, anyway, I really want to give away this emergency compact crank radio to, away to somebody. And uh, uh, I don't know, maybe, Pat, maybe Patty's not there anymore. Let's see. <laughs> hint, hint. Because uh, you know, because because Patty shows up every every week, and 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 uh, Frosty's shown up several times, and uh, I'd like to see one of them come and say hi. Uh, and uh, who else we have going on here? Michelle, um, I'm I'm going to send her this thing anyway, um, <laughs> just because I like Michelle. She's an old friend of mine. Uh, let's see. Uh, anything going on in YouTube? Nothing going on YouTube. Going nothing going on. I tell you what, if nobody wins this thing tonight, we're going to carry it over till the next week. We're going to carry it over to the first of the year. Um, this is a kind of a big deal. And I want uh, I want somebody to win, but I, I want to. What I want to do is I want to give it to someone who is, has been lurking around, who has not really spoken up at this point, who's been lurking around and wants to, or is coming in for the first time because. Look, I, I spent a lot. We have the regulars that win a lot of stuff. This one I, I want to to um, do for someone who uh, is is just showing up, is lurking around, but not really saying much. Uh, I don't know. We'll we'll uh, we'll see what we'll do. Courtney, uh, Courtney, what did you win? Courtney, you won a uh, a uh, Courtney, you won a uh, an ornament, didn't you? And as well last week. Okay, well, how are we going to do this? Because I've got to give this away before I shut down the stream tonight. <laughs> it's getting late, and I want to give this away. How are we going to do this? Uh, let's see. Patty's quiet. Uh, I'll tell you what. Uh, hmm, how am I going to do this? You know what? Courtney says I kind of teared up there um, for a minute. Courtney says, I want an ornament. You know what, Courtney? i tell you what I'm going to do. Um, Charles has joined us in the chat. Charles, hey, Charles, it's great to see you. I, I, maybe you can say something, say hi. Courtney, I'm going to send you something uh, special as well. But uh, for, the, for the next person who, who uh, chimes in and says, I want this radio, wins this radio. And uh, Charles, if it's you, you can say, hey, I want this radio. You win the radio. Or Patty or whatever. Um, Courtney says, keep it up for the new year. 
And, uh, you know, I tell you what I'm going to do. Uh, I got to give away this radio. <laughs> Courtney, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and give you this radio. How about that? Uh, Courtney wins a radio. You win an ornament and a radio. I'll get that over to you. Because i got to give this radio away to somebody. And uh, I think you would appreciate this radio. And for those of you who did not speak up, that should teach you not to speak up. Right? Uh, so, Courtney, what do you say? You want to win a radio? It's yours. Uh, congratulations to Courtney. She wins the Midland Emergency Compact Radio. Anyway, uh, we're going to close up the stream now because it went way longer than I had planned to. But I want to say thank you to everyone once again for being with me. I want to thank you for being with me on the live stream for the entire year. Uh, I want to uh, say that uh, we'll be back next week for the first show of 2020. And, of course, what that means is uh, 2020 means we'll all have great eyesight, won't we? And which means that the year after 2020, we'll have we'll all have uh, 2020 hindsight, right? So anyway, uh, yeah, I know it's a bad dad joke, but um, that's what I'm known for. Phil, if you're still there, you can appreciate that. <laughs> anyway, so uh, I want to thank you for being here with me tonight. I hope everyone has a great New Year, a happy New Year, and. Uh, has a safe new year remember if you're going to be out partying on the new year please do not drink and drive please don't text and drive do not drink and drive do not text and drive um, keep it safe drink responsibly enjoy the new year but don't overdo do it because uh, you know that, that never ends well uh, so I want everybody to have a safe and happy new year. So you can join me next week for the first episode of Drink with Rick. Uh, and you know it's not Drunk with Rick, okay? That's why we, it's not called Drunk with Rick. It's called Drink with Rick. Um, but I want everyone to join me next week on the Saturday Night Wine Stream for the first episode in 2020. Uh, and we can all get together and drink with Rick. Good night.